so let's look at the tools now quickly okay this won't take long okay well I told you all the whole thing at the beginning of this chapter about setting up the right click to select the tools and I suggest you go with that all right you may have noticed though that um, there's a number next to each tool that one two three four five six seven eight nine and zero and then for the two automation tools Q and W and that's to do with uh, I mean I'll just show you this but I don't recommend you use it um, there's that whole thing about you know I always say use the right click for the tools but there is the other way where you tap escape and the tool menu appears under the mouse wherever the mouse is located all right just tap escape no need to hold it down the tool menu appears right under the mouse ready to select now you can use that escape tapping to bring up the menu in combination with the numbers next to the tools okay so like there's the mouse there I have got my hand off the mouse now I tap escape the menu appears move the mouse away now I've let go of the mouse again the menu stays there until you select a tool so you can tap escape it brings up the menu then I could press the one key and it selects the pointer escape and then the number two key brings up the pencil escape three rubber escape four finger tool escape five scissors escape six glue tool escape seven mute escape eight quantize escape nine velocity escape zero uh, the magnifier and escape Q is the automation select tool and escape W is the automation curve tool I think that's right in it yeah, automation select and curve but I mean what's the point of that <laughs> I mean you've got to reach out escape and then tap the number key for the appropriate tool I mean you just use the right click but I just showed you that so you know what those numbers are for right all right alrighty so let's look at the tools the pointer tool we know it's for all the lassoing of groups of notes it's to use it with shift to then click and bring notes that are distanced apart in and out of your selection use it for dragging notes in and out in length whether individually or as a group for moving them around in time whether individually as a group and to drag the fronts in and out whether individually as a group and all that and dragging copies off using the alt key etc etc pencil tool obviously penciling in notes the eraser tool pretty straightforward you just click on a note and it deletes it or you lasso a group of notes and click on any and they delete and of course if you use the pointer tool you can shift and left click to bring notes into the selection that can't be lassoed like to leave a gap for example in a cluster then use the eraser tool and click on any and they delete all right there you go okay finger tool well in um, piano edit all it does the only function the finger tool has is to drag the back of notes in and out okay so it's pretty much useless in piano edit so forget that um, Skizzers tool, scissors tool, right? Okay, this works with a snap. All right, so if I put my snap into ticks where there is no snapping to the grid at all, I can position the uh, scissors tool over a note at any position. And when I cut by left clicking, it chops the note exactly under where the mouse uh, scissor tool is located when you click to cut, right? And that's the same for grouper notes. Just cut anywhere if you're in ticks and it will cut the entire lot straight down the same line which is actually quite useful for I don't know like lining up the front of a bunch of ragged notes it's another technique I mean I, you could have you know you could have the notes at with ragged start time so they're not all starting exactly the same like that and then you could just lasso the lot and with a snap set to ticks you could chop like that and it would chop them all in the exact same position then you could lasso those little front scraps and get rid of them and they're all starting at the same front position okay um, and if you put the snap to something like division then if I chop these notes it, this group of notes say it's the same with an individual note you know you take an individual note and once you've put the snap to like a grid line like division or beat or bar if you were using very very long notes across multiple regions um, you just have to click anywhere near that grid line of whatever the snap is set to division or B usually and it doesn't have to be accurate it will just chop it exactly on that snap whether it's division or B it will chop it exactly on the line and of course it's the same for a group of notes you know lasso the lot click anywhere near that division line and they'll all chop exactly on that division line 
And again, of course, uses the pointer tool to shift and left click to bring in notes that are spaced apart if you can't lasso the group. And again, just cut, and they all cut. All right, that's a scissor tool. And actually, let me just put those back where they were like that. I want them cut now to show you the glue tool next. So let's get the scissor tool, drag over the lot, chop them. All right, let's look at the glue tool next. Glue tool, uh, quite simply, highlight a couple of notes that are next door to each other on the same pitch, glue them together by left clicking with the glue tool. That doesn't, they don't have to be exactly next to each other, the notes. There can be a gap like that, for example, and I just lasso them both. Use the glue tool, click on either, and they glue together, and logic fills in that gap, and what remains is a single note, the exact length of those two notes. In other words, the new note resulting from gluing these two together has its end point set by the end of the last note in the row, and its front position set by the front position, start position of the first note in the row, and logic just fills in the gap. It's the same for three notes, look. Okay, now if you've got notes of differing velocity, let's just use the velocity tool and push this one up loud and make that one quiet. Okay, three notes medium velocity, loud velocity, quiet velocity. We're going to glue them together, highlight the lot, and click. And they take their velocity from the first note in the group. All right, doesn't matter how far apart notes are, look, it works the same. Pardon me, the only thing you can't do is um, um, you can't glue together notes on a different pitch. Bang, no, nothing. Right? Sha, that's your glue tool, very useful. Um, the mute tool, fantastically useful tool because it allows you to knock notes out like that by just clicking on them individually and they become grayed and muted, which is fantastic for taking notes out of a pattern so you can hear things more clearly to make edit decisions. Uh, without actually removing them and then just click to re-enable them to unmute them you know um, it works for groups by lassoing the lot and clicking and they all become muted lasso the lot click and they all become unmuted and again with the shift pointer tool and the shift like you know pointer tool and shift and left click you can bring in notes to the selection that cannot be selected by lassoing because they need to be spaced apart or something or you know and then just use the mute tool and click on the whole lot and they all become muted like that Great, great tool. It also allows you to uh, mute notes temporarily to hear what the pattern would be like without them in. And then if you decide that it's better like that, just delete them. But you can, It gives you the opportunity to hear the pattern without certain notes uh, to make decisions before you bother to delete them and stuff. Very, very, very useful tool, the mute tool. Okay, it's the quantize tool next. Quantize, right? And it works taking its quantize value from the menu here. On the local menu bar and of course you can use the advanced quantization parameters and the cue swing as we showed as well and the cue tool you just click on an individual note and it quantizes it so it's very very good for quantizing individual notes and events uh, which are otherwise impossible to do because you know um, it's it can be quicker than you know highlighting a group and then quantizing like that you know you just I like the group and click on them and quantize, but you can quantize individual notes, you know, like that, bish bash bosh. And again, if you use the pointer tool, you can shift and left click to choose notes that are spaced apart and can't be lassoed, and then use the quantize tool to quantize the lot. Okay, now quantize the tool, of course, knows where the grid is. It doesn't matter what your grid's set like, it, it knows where those quantize value grid lines are. So if I put my grid into 12, so now I quantize those three notes that were selected to sixteenths. They snap to some invisible position at the moment because the grid's in twelfth, but as soon as I push the grid to sixteenths, sure enough, they've snapped their front starting edges exactly to the quantized value of sixteenths. Right. That's a quantize tool, very useful. Velocity tool, we, we've showed this a lot already, but just to recap, you drag up and down and the velocity is shown to you. I uh, drag up and down on the note with the velocity tool and then the velocity is shown to you as both a colour coordination purple for the lowest velocity working up through the colours of the rainbow to red for the loudest and also that horizontal line in the middle moves up and down as a percentage of the entire length of the note to give you a second visual clue as to the velocity that you're dragging 
okay and of course you can highlight a group of notes by whatever method and then drag them up and down as a group in velocity okay and they all retain their relative values such as when we were adjusting those hi-hat notes as a group up and down they all rose up and up in velocity to become louder as a whole group but they kept their perfectly relative velocity values to retain their groove um, now there's the only thing with doing a group up and down like this is that they can only be pushed up as far as the maximum level of the loudest note because they all must keep their relative velocity levels to each other in the group once the loudest note in this case the middle note has been pushed up to its maximum velocity that's as far as you can push the group up because the other two in the group must keep their relative velocity levels to the loudest one and that has reached its maximum and therefore the entire group cannot be pushed up any further and likewise when you drag down this is the lowest velocity note at the end and as we drag the group down once that end note reaches its lowest minimum velocity again the group will no longer go down in velocity any further because the other notes must keep their relative velocity to the quietest note which has now reached its absolute minimum and cannot be dragged down any further all right easy peasy and again you know you lasso to get groups of notes or use the pointer tool with the shift and left click to select notes that can't be lassoed and then use the velocity tool to adjust them as a group keeping the relative levels blah 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 there you go right okay and uh, that just leaves the zoom tool which is good uh, for zooming in on little things that you need to edit very finely that may be quite detailed and small and you need to zoom them in to get the the better picture to, to do a very fine little edit of some type you just zoom over the selection that you want let go and it zooms it in to fit your editor okay and then left click on the background you go back to the previous zoom simple as that to zoom to fit uh, a selection of notes exactly to the width then you want to sort of be quite accurate to get the beginning of this marquee selection marquee selection being that green box I'm dragging over everything here make sure that the beginning of it starts on the big on the over the very very front of the first note of the group and ends on the back of the last group in the note and then they will really fit perfectly widthwise and remember from the beginning of this chapter once we've put logic into that more professional mode of working the catch playhead guy can be left off so even when you zoomed right in like this the playhead can happily cycle around outside of that zoom view and this zoomed in edit will stay put where it won't jump around and you can edit to your heart's content then when you finish left click on the background anywhere with the zoom tool and it goes back to the previous zoom all right Okay, uh, that just leaves the automation select tool and the automation curve tool, but they only are used in hyperdraw, so we'll leave those until we come to hyperdraw in a minute. Okay, so that's your tools.